Our next guest, I am so pleased to have him on, uh, is one of the great minds from the distribution side. So, uh, Kenny, absolutely thrilled about this guy. I think he's one of the brightest minds in our industry. Tell us a little bit about our next guest. I sure would love to, Eric. Uh, welcome. Uh, Control Talk now for the week ending December 8th welcomes Mr. Brian Turner uh, to the show. Brian is the president of Control Co., an Oakland-based control solutions provider for commercial and industrial buildings. Uh, Brian is one of the pioneers and great minds in the industry. Brian, we welcome you to the program. Yeah, welcome, Brian. Thanks, guys. It's great to be here. And as you know, I, uh, you know, I've known you for years. You're, you're one of the most fascinating people I know in our industry. You know, you are always welcome to come on Control Talk. Uh, now we'll talk to you anytime about any subject in our industry. But uh, specifically today, I was hoping you we could talk a bit about the data eye. Uh, as you know, and congratulations, data eye is up for our 2013 Control Trends Award. So uh, congratulations on that. And and start at the beginning, Brian. Uh, tell us about data eye. And uh, specifically, uh, if you could tell us a little bit about how it would benefit uh, commercial and industrial uh, managers. Thanks, Eric. It's an honor to be nominated for this award. Um, so what is Data Eye Pro? Well, first we have to really understand what Data Eye is. And just a little reminder of what Data Eye was designed to do. Um, one, we built it inside Niagara um, in order to make it easier for building engineers and software programmers who know Niagara to be able to easily and quickly model data that they've integrated into Niagara. Um, really the goal was to design something that would allow people to quickly understand all this information that's being collected by Niagara. Now the challenges we've had with that over the last several years is really within the visualization of all of that data. So the data models allow building engineers and programmers to create a lot of interesting information about the building um, with all that data that's coming in. However, the UI technologies out there have not really been designed to make that data meaningful, at least from a user experience. So we really had to change our thinking in that we were only a back-end provider to really we needed to design tools to make the user experience more meaningful so that that information was available. So we built, uh, over the last two years, we've really spent a lot of time with our developers and actually have a brand new team that's focused on building a set of tools designed to work together or independently to really illustrate this, this data. Um, we've, had to, we've really spent a lot of time thinking about what the industry is doing with uh, user experience and uh, most of the user experience is, is either in an app or in a browser or being used by mobile devices or tablets and, and as well as laptops and desktops. So you still need the user experience to be very responsive and be able to be meaningful in all of those different uh, media devices. So we've used HTML5 as our core backbone technology for developing all these tools. And um, Man, this sounds so, uh, so advanced, 21st century. Uh, for the uninitiated, Brian, why don't we review what a data model is? Yeah, so we're trying to keep up with um, the big data trends or even trying to get ahead of big data. I mean, obviously, when you're talking about building data and the energy and the um, HVAC and, and maybe even lighting, it's really a small piece of, of big data when, when there's so much information being collected about people and buildings and anything else out there in the big data databases. So we're talking a small portion, but for our industry, it's, it, it is very much big data. Um, so data modeling, is, it, otherwise known as semantic tagging, um, and without getting too technical, it's really just a way to identify data and create relationships between these different data pieces. And it's a way to identify data that's meaningful to humans, um, as well as machines. So in the first point, when we talk about making it uh, meaningful to humans, it's instead of uh, taking something commonly referred to as RAT uh, for an engineer, um, actually calling that return air temperature and, or even ZT and calling that zone temperature. And then in order to make that even more meaningful to, to a building manager, actually applying that to you know, the building A conference room on the first floor. So all of those pieces are pieces of semantic tagging or pieces of the data model to really help 
um, building managers and building owners and whomever else might be dealing with that information to understand what they're dealing with. So they don't have to go into a database and find Lawnworks or BACnet or, or Air Handler number one and try to figure out what the temperature or what the set point is that they're supposed to change. So it's, it's really just trying to simplify it for that. On top of that, the other piece is allowing machines to talk to machines. Um, if you don't have normalized data, um, which is what Niagara does, then you can't get the machines to talk to machines. But if you don't have a data model to where an air handler in Lawnworks knows that another air handler in BACnet are both the same type of piece of equipment, just communicating two different protocols, then they really, you don't have a chance to really allow them to work together in a seamless way. Once everything's modeled, and this is really the power of data eye, so once everything's modeled and put into a portfolio or even just a building, you can have analytics or diagnostics or fault detection routines or even real-time control strategies running against that data model. So it really allows you to scale Niagara in, in some sense. So we kind of coined that um, specific thing, responsive analytics. So, hey, before we go any further, I uh, just want to let the Control Trends community know that uh, Brian and Control Co. are platinum sponsors for the 2013 Control Trends Awards. Uh, they're our first distributor sponsor ever to come on. So, uh, Brian, I want to let you know on, on behalf of me and Ken and the entire Control Trends community how much we appreciate your support. Thanks, Eric. We're actually very happy to be involved in the Control Trends Awards this year. Uh, we think it's a very important thing for all of us to get together and celebrate our successes in this industry. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in January in New York. Well, cool, Brian. We're looking forward to it, too. So let's get back to DataEye for a minute, Brian. What would be an example of a way a customer could use DataEye Pro? Great question. So one, one simple way to uh, explain this is just measurement and verification. Everybody wants to know that the money they're spending on energy saving strategies, whether it's replacing lights or upgrading their air conditioning equipment or just simply changing set points or, or fixing their schedule or taking some maybe more aggressive actions with their scheduling routines um, actually has an impact. So if you have your meters and your power data integrated in some way, then you can know the data leading up to the date that you made your change. And then from that date forward, you can actually see if there was an impact. And, and because Data Eye works in Niagara and it's, it's very near real time, you can see this change immediately. You don't have to wait for months to, to get your bills from the utilities and actually get that data into a spreadsheet or something. So this is that's one simple way. Um, another way that's very common that you're hearing a lot about right now is fault detection. Um, actually having the data mine other data to, to determine if your equipment is working well or if it's working efficiently or simply just if something's broken. So that's another way that uh, we commonly um, see people using data. Eye. And then the final way that, and we'll actually show this a little bit later, um, is actually using it for forecasting or predicting uh, where um, your energy is going. So we can use a lot of different things, but we use the weather um, to determine not only um, what your energy is today and record what it has been in the past, but we can also predict. So we get a 10 day forecast from uh, the Weather Channel or from NOAA or Weather Underground or any other weather station that you might be tied into. And then we can actually look at historical performance of your building and predict what your energy load or your energy profile is going to be over those 10 days. That allows you to start making some decisions whether or not you want to change set points, maybe you want to take a little more aggressive action um, to not hit those peaks if it looks like you're going to set new peaks for the period. Wow, that is absolutely gorgeous, Brian. Really, really a cool feature. So, uh, hey, real quick, let me remind the Control Trends community this product is up for a 2013 Control Trends Award. If you have not registered to vote yet, just take two seconds, click on the, the, the right side of the Control Trends page, you'll see a place that says register to vote. Uh, you've got to register to vote to be able to vote for, uh, for any products in the Control Trends Awards. Uh, the voting period is going to actually start December 15th, that's when we'll start mailing the ballots out. So take a quick second and uh, register to vote right now. So Brian, where can uh, the Control Trends community find out more about this product? Great. Well, the best way to contact us is either at controlco.com or you can follow us on Twitter 
or get us on LinkedIn. Yeah, I'll tell you, Brian is truly one of the great minds and innovative thinkers now. Uh, it, I think this has been aptly demonstrated. Um, also, Brian's uh, agreeing to uh, contribute to controltrends.org uh, on a re regular basis with a, uh, a new column called Fault Lines. And uh, we'll be looking out for that, and uh, hopefully we see it very soon. Thank you very much, Brian. Yeah, Brian, thanks so much. I tell you what, that uh, that is that is going to be such a treat uh, for us and for the Control Trends community. Brian Turner, one of the great minds in our industry. Brian, thanks so much. Fault Lines, Brian will be a contributor on Control Trends. Dot org and Brian, hope we can get you back on the show again. Thanks very much. Thanks, Eric and Ken. It's uh, it's been great. Um, available anytime you want to talk about innovative technologies and in building automation.